Sean here. We are with two of the guys from Silverstein, and you are? I'm Josh, and I play guitar. And I'm Billy, and I play bass. Um, definitely want to let you guys know. I thank you guys for the opportunity. I'm also a big fan of you guys Very cool. as well. So thanks. Uh, when I got the opportunity to do it, I definitely jumped on it. Um, now, you guys were formed back in 2000. Uh, now, did you ever guys think that you would be still jamming to this day, and yet with your original lineup, which is nowadays, you know, you don't really see that yeah. too often? Nope. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think we got into this thinking it was going to go anywhere other than just having a couple good times yeah. playing with our friends, and uh, yeah, the fact that it's still going strong is pretty, pretty wild. Yeah, you guys are definitely popular. Yeah. <laughs> I guess so. I think like, even once we started touring, it was... I don't know, like, it's, uh, especially at first, like, it was very hard to, like, look at it as, like, a career. It was like, okay, like, we're just putting everything on hold so we can do this now, and then we just kind of kept doing it, and it kept going, so I think it wasn't until, like, within the last couple of years that we've been thinking, like, oh, I guess this is, like, this is our job, and this is our <laughs> career, and, like, we did, we really have nothing else, and we need to keep, we need to keep this band going, you know? Yeah, you guys have definitely been around for a long time, and uh, usually bands make a couple albums and then they're done. Yeah. <laughs> and you guys keep rocking on. Now, after being on Victory Records for so many years, why did you get guys to actually decide to leave and go to Hopeless Records? I think it was just um, kind of like a, a time to turn the page. You know, we uh, were at Victory for seven years, and uh, we did a lot of cool stuff with them, and, um, you know, made some really great friendships with some people that worked there. and. Uh, they did really great things for our band, so, uh, but it, com it comes a time where you just kind of reach the end of something, you know, like, we kind of, uh, we're looking for an opportunity to do something new, and, and we, uh, had friends at Hopeless, and we respect their catalog and the, their business model, and how they, uh, uh, they put a lot of work into charity, and, um, it just seemed like they were the right, right place for us, so, um, just kind of a, a new experience. Um, yeah, I noticed that you guys were actually just in the uh, Day to Remember video, All I Want. Yeah, yeah it's, it's a pretty fun. badass video. <laughs> yeah, it's cool to be a part of that. Yeah. Yeah, there's like, uh, like 10 different people from 10 different bands or something. Yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe more. There's yeah, 20, 20 or 25 that I, I actually caught. You got as many caught, guys yeah. as I could to jump on it. Yeah. yeah, it was definitely awesome seeing you guys in there. <laughs> now, when your album uh, Broken is Easily Fixed came out and it skyrocketed and fan base pretty went, much went crazy. Were you guys ever expecting that to happen? No, I mean, we toured around a little bit, uh, just kind of around our area of Canada, uh, and tested the waters, seen a, a little bit of success in that, I mean, we could drive somewhere to play a show and kids would have some clue of who we are and come out and see us. Uh, but bringing that to the States, like, it's a whole other country for us. We're Canadian, so it's it's weird to uh, to be in a whole different country playing your music. And at first, I mean, there was definitely some hard times where there were not a lot of kids at the yeah. shows, and we were just traveling, eating zoodles out of the can and stuff. But I mean, we just plugged away at it because we really enjoy doing what we do, and it has built slowly and steadily. And yeah. Now looking back on it, it's, we kind of stand on top of the mountain. It's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> I think with that sort of thing too, it's like you look at success and expectations and things it's like we we always thought like oh if we you know if we sold 10,000 records that would be crazy and then when it happened we were just like oh cool well like what's next yeah. you know there, there's it, there's never really I think in music especially you know we've been doing it for so long there's never really a point where someone's like here you go you've you've made it like here's yeah. the end of the road here's the pot of gold you know we, we've, we've never seen that and uh in this type of music, I guess, you're just always kind of striving for what's next and what new experience haven't we done, what tour, what, you know, country have we not toured, and, uh, you know, what what state have we not played, and st stuff like that, so. And actually, still, the last time that we saw you, uh, we used to live in uh, Florida, well, and we saw you guys right before we left Florida, you guys played with A Day to Remember and uh, August Burns Red. Yep. It's a badass show. Yeah, that's fun. Fun tour. Yeah, actually, uh, Shane signed our concert ticket for our daughter and uh, cool. said happy birthday because it was her birthday. Nice. Yeah, cool. nice. Um, now, in 2006, uh, you guys uh, were nominated uh, for a, a uh, Juno Award for being best band. Uh, how that make you guys feel? Amazing to be recognized yeah. by your country, especially like from playing in a band. The nature of ours, like kind of the more underground music scene, it's that's that's like being nominated for a Grammy. 
so it's it's unheard of kind of for our world but I think it I think it's, yeah it was cool <laughs> it was cool to be recognized and um, I think we knew going into it like that we didn't have the chance to win but wow one of the bands that was nominated uh, Bedouin Sound Clash which were you know guys we knew and they were performing at the Junos were like oh like they, they had they had like a single on, single on the radio on the ra- all the like time on stuff, like like, con- like adult contemporary radio you'd like hear it when you go to the mall and stuff and we we're like okay well like we're not gonna win but that's really cool that they nominated us so like let's go and let's enjoy it and we'll have a good time and I think uh, some of the funnest times we've had were going out to that yeah uh, with some crazy parties and just just being around all these like rubbing elbows with real rock stars yeah like, right it was like we oh, had to get back in the van and. Yeah, there's there's Drafting Brian the Adams. He just you know <laughs> he just accepted his uh, his lifetime achievement award or whatever, and he's coming to say hi at the bar or whatever. Like those were pretty cool times. Nice. Now, uh, what what was the inspiration behind your album Discovering the Waterfront, which basically you know, has classic Silverstein songs like Smile in Your Sleep and My Heroine? I think at that point we uh, had just you know we'd been touring off of uh, When Broken, and we'd kind of become somewhat of a real band, and uh, so the I guess the um, inspiration for that was was just everything that we had gone through uh, in getting to that point and um, making the decisions in our lives to like stop the like you know perpetuation of, of real life at home you know and uh, you know be on tour and give ourselves band, up to the road give ourselves up to being in the band yeah that's what discovering the waterfront was about kind of that unknown that's out there that like. We think we know so much, but it's taken us up to here, and now it's like a whole new world again. Yeah, right. <laughs> and also, what made you guys decide to do a dance remix of Smile in Your Sleep, which, out, by the way, is pretty badass. Uh, that actually, um, I don't even really know if it was our idea, as it more so was the guy who did it, because uh, he was a friend of ours named Alan, and uh, we stayed with him two or three times on our first tour, and uh, he's from the, like, uh, the D.C. kind of... Um, Baltimore, that kind of whole area, and we, we would like play in DC and then go stay with him. We play in Baltimore and go stay with him. We'd play in Virginia and we'd stay with him. And, and uh, he was like really into, um, you know, like punk and emo and hardcore, but also really into, uh, you know, electronic music. And he was like, hey, I'd really like to remix one of your songs sometime. And then we uh, we made Smile in Your Sleep, and we we thought, oh, cool, like now's a chance for him to do a remix. So it was kind of, I guess, it was more so his idea. Yeah. Wild though. Uh, he's really good. He actually did a, a remix for uh, the band Cursive. Uh, they had like a contest for uh, who could make the best remix, and he won. And it was like on on a record, and I, nice. I really like that too. Now, being in the band for over ten years now, you guys gotta have some you know crazy tour or fan stories that you would like to share. Oh, I mean, crazy fan stories. There's there's a guy at the show today. His name is William Woods, and. Uh, He's, he's been a fan of ours for a really long time. I think I think this is his 15th show, wow. which is like pretty crazy. We've we've seen crazy. He's pretty here. young too. He's pretty young. Um, he's pretty much really see, come to see us play every single time we've ever played in Colorado, nice. um, which is awesome. Uh, and he's just he's just so stoked. And I don't know like if I met someone for like fi- like 15 times, like I've you know we, he comes and hangs out, we talk to him and. It's like every single time, it's like the first time he's met us, and he's just like, "Oh my God, I can't believe it, dude! I can't believe you're here!" And it's like, <laughs> "Yeah, we well, come, come on, man. <laughs> you know my name." <laughs> it's like, "Yeah, we know your name. Yeah. We've met you like 15 times before. <laughs> we hang out every time." Yeah, yeah, so, but we've had some crazy fans that uh, actually, if, if this is like a tattoo thing, um, uh, we have a fan named uh, George from San Diego who has like 15 or 16 Silverstein tattoos. Oh, wow. His entire <laughs> back, his entire back is like a. Uh, discovering the waterfront, like the back cover is like he's got a back piece, and he's got a bunch of the, he's got a bunch of the robots from the broken. He's got uh, the big train on his like side from uh, uh, arrivals and departures. A bunch of the little like Lego men with their heads on fire and stuff. He's got a lot of crazy stuff. So Sometimes we made you gotta watch out for those people. Yeah, well he's, <laughs> he's the best we've known. He's been, <laughs> yeah, he's been to like like over 50 of our shows, and uh, he'll he'll come. He's from San Diego, but he'll come travel on the West Coast with us and. Uh, he flew up to Canada for our anniversary, our 10 year anniversary shows, and um, he's become a really good friend. So it's cool to like have those dedicated, diehard fans that can stick around. You know, we've got him for life. Yeah, he right. doesn't <laughs> have a choice at this yeah. point. Yeah, unless you do a laser, and that's pretty expensive. <laughs> yeah. Now, I suppose he's got us for life. Yeah, I guess. So. <laughs> 
Now, now your album uh, Arrival and uh, Departures, which was produced by uh, Mark Trevino, who also did Jimmy World and Blink-182, uh, still to this day has sold over 62,000 copies and counting. Uh, how was it working with Mark, and did you expect that album to be so popular? Yeah, um, I mean, that that record like was the first time that we had, like, like I said, with discovering, like, that was when we were like, oh, I guess we're a real band now. But then it was like, well, I guess we got to really like do we make a record just because we're going to make a record or do we like try to work with a, a guy like Mark Trump you know with a big name and try to like uh, produce the record in a certain way and, and uh, that was the that was the goal there um, we met with a lot of different producers and um, we just really love Mark's work uh, Jimmy World and Blink-22 but like uh, as well a lot of his like unknown stuff is some of our favorite stuff like he did uh, this band called Mineral which was like a, a band that pretty much made us start this band, and, and another band, Knapsack, and a bunch of old, kind of, West Coast emo stuff that, that we really liked, and uh, so he, he showed interest in doing the record, and, and he, and we went with them, and um, I think that the record was kind of a struggle to make, though, because uh, the position that we are all in our lives, and um, we just kind of went into it without really giving us time to, like, take a break or take a breather from anything, and, and uh, I think we were really overwhelmed, and um, I, I mean, I think we all uh, can say that that was like a re- like really dark times in our lives, and uh, I think that 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 may show a bit, but at the same time, it's it's like uh, the kind of the experience that we like the lessons that we learned in that record was like a, I think a big uh, learning point for us, you know. Now, uh, you guys did Punk Goes Pop Volume 2. You did a cover of Apologize yeah. by One Republic. Uh, did you guys choose that song, and why? Yeah, that song's a bit of a guilty pleasure for us. Um, we were traveling around in Europe, and everybody was humming it, and it was getting played in a lot of the, the discos over there after the show. Yeah. Uh, it just got stuck in everybody's head, and when it came time to try and choose a, a pop song to cover, it was a no-brainer. We yeah. just like, well, what else are we going to cover? Yeah, right, so... And now I'd say to say it doesn't get stuck in my head anymore. I'm pretty yeah, sick of it. right. I'm pretty, <laughs> so I think after, after ourselves. recording it and playing it enough times, we just kind of got real over it. And I think it's like, I mean, there's certain songs in our catalog that we kind of have to play and that we've been playing for years. And sometimes it's like, oh great, we gotta play this one again. But that song, it was like, it, because we didn't write it, we could just be like, the second we were sick of it, it was like, okay, we're done with this. <laughs> like, no more apologize. We might bring it back someday. Uh, it's a fun one, but uh, yeah. <laughs> Definitely a good cover. I personally liked it. Yeah, I, I'm stoked on how it came out, but I'm also stoked to not play it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, your album, uh, A Shipwreck in the Sand, uh, which is your current album, uh, how was it making your uh, music video for Vices? Dangerous. Very scary. <laughs> we uh, were on a sheet, a, a sheet of ice uh, yeah. of a lake. That was actually a frozen lake that we were on there. And it was in March, which... It so was the ice is starting to melt. The little. ice was getting it's, a little it's thawing, and, and we're surrounded by fire, which also doesn't help ice stay very solid. Right. So, so we were all pretty sketched out about making that, but we were assured that it would be fine. So we just it, well, I guess it goes into yeah. it, and I mean, it ended up looking pretty cool. I think. Almost quite literally <laughs> dove into it, but yeah. luckily no one fell through, and no one was hurt or injured. Or Until the next video we made with Robbie Starbuck, the same director, when Shane fell through the Shane floor. Shane did fall through the that floor, American, yeah. American, American, American Dream. Dream yeah. Video for that. Nice. So we were playing in the old rotted out house. Yeah. <laughs> so they always put us in the Alrighty, and last cool. but not least, uh, what does the future hold for Silver Shane? Now we know that you guys just got on Hopeless Records, and you have your EP Transitions, um, now I heard that there's rumors going around about a new album, Set This All Ablaze, uh, that people were saying that that wasn't the name, and now it's saying it is the name. Yeah, there was a press release that came out a few months ago that uh, said we were putting out Set This All Ablaze, and that's actually a line from uh, one of one or more of the songs, I guess, <laughs> on, Shipwreck. on uh, Shipwreck uh, that that goes with the whole like fire concept that goes along with that record and. Uh, it was like on a t-shirt or something and and on a I think it was on our MySpace so it was like the t-shirt design was on our my like our header of our MySpace and then so someone just said oh well like set this all ablaze that must be the new record. that must be the new record and then it's all of a sudden it's all of a sudden it says no, that's so, a rumor but we, we do have a new we do have a new record coming out um, I don't know what it's called yet but 
Uh, it's sometime it's this spring. Sometime this spring, yeah. April, Watch for it. April or May. As soon as we are allowed to announce when. We'll and how many more tours you guys got lined up? We got all the tours lined up. <laughs> Forever, pretty much. So many tours lined up. Yeah. So we'll be we'll be coming back to the states. We're 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 going to Australia after this and tour. We're going Europe. to Japan, Europe. We got lots lined up. So. Yeah. We're gonna keep busy. 2011 is gonna be one hell of a year. I think. Yeah. Well, I definitely can't wait for the new album to come out, whatever the name is. Uh, but I definitely thank you guys for taking yeah, the time out. So it was definitely a pleasure. Thanks, man. Peace. <laughs>